everybody, I'm Elise Explosion, and I am here today to talk about some stuff that probably doesn't really get talked about a whole lot in the toy collector community. And that is kind of like my toy pet peeves. So I asked, I asked a bunch of friends, I asked my sister, and I thought real hard about what I am kind of annoyed by in the state of modern toys and toy collecting. And I distilled it down to five concepts that really grind my gears, really plant my ornamental bulbs two inches deep. Things that I really just would love to change when it comes to toys and toy collecting. And the first thing is the overproliferation of the blind bag or blind package gimmick. And this goes back, this is going back a couple of years now, because I remember these really got big, I want to say in like the mid-2010s. It's, it's always been an option, like I remember picking up some blind package toys when I was in college, but there were always ways to kind of trace what they were, either by like an identification code on the package or something of that nature. But I want to say like probably around like 2013, 14, 15, it just exploded. Probably having a little bit to do with the introduction of toy video unboxings on YouTube and the hits that they get. Somebody out there decided, oh, let's just blind box all the toys. I remember back to when I was collecting My Little Pony and they had the blind boxes there. You could always kind of like tell which one it was, again, based on a code. But then everything just, it just exploded. It used to be just smaller toys like that, like the small pony figures, things like that. But now it's just kind of exploded across, pri across price points. Now you're getting $40, $50 blind box dolls from like Poopsie Surprise and LOLs and it's too much. It also introduces the concept of gotta buy it till I get the one I want, which let's be real, that's gambling for kids. And we really should not be encouraging that. And I know that I'm guilty of it as well. I love a good blind box toy. But I also am an adult and have the opportunity to say, oh, I didn't get this one. I can go on eBay and buy it. When you get LOLs or hair adorables for your six year old niece for her birthday and she doesn't get the one she wants, she's just gonna keep asking for LOLs. It encourages actions that I can't condone. It encourages addictive behaviors. And that is not something that we should be programming kids to do. So that is like probably one of the biggest ones for me. I really wish we could take a step back and just offer more dolls in a freaking box so that you know what you're getting. Gimmicks are cute, but they're also a lot more dangerous than they look on the outside. Thing number two that is driving me bejiblies when it comes to toys. Excessive packaging. So right here on the ground, uh, right here, this, these are remnants from a non and -ah surprise doll. And I gotta be perfectly honest with you, this is one of the better ones. But still, you have the outside clamshell. You've got the inside pouch that you're supposed to inflate with the straw, detonate. Or, you know, detonate, explode it. Then you've got the inside little packages that you open. You've got the little zip that you undo. The confetti that goes everywhere. It just keeps adding up. And again, I am an adult with a filming studio. There's trash all over from months worth of unboxings here that I haven't brought out to the dumpster yet because I don't use this room that often. So much of it says that it's recyclable, but where? You know, my recycling containers won't take them. There are still places in this country that don't recycle. Can you believe that? That's another question for another story. But there's so 
much trash. And I remember like when I was a kid, okay, let's say you got an action figure, a carded action figure. There was the cardboard box, there was a little bubble insert, and the plastic on the top. You, are, you get a Barbie. There's the outside box. There's the inside card that Barbie is like fastened to. Whether it's by rubber bands, twist ties, even little stitches to keep things in place. Now it's just overkill. And you know, I this is a toy line that I love dearly, the capsule chicks. What do you do with these? You're swimming in them. We, there are so many of these. You get five per box. You know, God forbid you get the Capsule Chicks Ultimix collection. There's 20 of these in there. What are you going to do with 20 flimsy plastic capsules except for throw them out? Like there's, there, I'm sure there's good ways to recycle these, but who is going to do that? Who is going to take the time to recycle all of this? Who is going to take the time to separate their plastics, to pull the, the labels off of things because you can't recycle those? It's, it's too much and I would really appreciate toy companies taking a look back on where they came from, almost. The, the packaging was never this bad. Number three for me. Dolls that do not stand on their own. Or not in the case of Honey or Monster High here, um, dolls that don't come with stands. Now, there's two parts to this. Yes, I am looking at this from a collector angle where I want to display my dolls, but imagine if I wanted to play with them. This doll does not stand without a stand. There's no way she's, there's no way for her to do that. So if you want to have some sort of like imaginative play where you're keeping your doll like behind the counter at a store or something, she's not going to do it. And that was, you know, alleviated a little bit like Monster High and some of the other more popular doll lines now do come with stands, but Barbie doesn't, you know, any Barbie that I've ever gotten that was Playline has I've had to buy aftermarket stands for so that they would stand up. And that was a big problem for me as a kid. So it's just, it's confusing, especially when you've got things, you know, if we take a look back at the video where I went over my Novi Stars collection, they came with stands, but they didn't work. You know, the, the stands disconnected from the dolls, they fell over, the stands weren't properly fitted, the stands weren't properly molded, there was no way for the stand that was provided with the doll to actually work. And that's a big problem. If you're, if you're including something to work specifically with this doll, this particular doll, and it doesn't, what are you gonna do? It's, I don't know, I just, I find that extremely annoying when it comes to at least me for displaying or just kids for playing. I hated this as a child. If there was no way for my doll to stand up, she was going to sit in a chair all day. And that didn't really work for the play that we had. So I can only imagine it's gotten worse. I just, I can't. Give the dolls a stand that works or make their feet support their weight. Number four on the list of things that really, really infuriate me when it comes to toys these days. Sexy baby BS. There are so many, so many toy lines out there that are young, small children that are way too sexified for uh, what they're supposed to represent to the point where it feels like somebody is being like somebody on the design team has a fetish that they're showing off because it is really really obvious in lines like poopsie surprise and the lol dolls these dolls are like wearing garters these dolls are wearing excessive makeup and lipstick and that's fine it just not every child is a pageant queen. You know, there's a time for that, I'm sure. Not in a way that I'm personally comfortable with, but like, okay, 
If you've got false eyelashes on, you probably shouldn't have a pacifier. There's something about it that makes me extremely uncomfortable, and especially the LOL dolls. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on a soapbox real quick. I mean, this video is basically just me on a soapbox. I have been to subculture events where there are fetish things present. I know it when I see it. And that is what it is. Peddling LOL dolls specifically to young children is really creepy. Is really, really, really creepy. And they make me uncomfortable. The OMGs, I'll give a bye to, they're supposed to be older. So if they wanna be a little bit more glammed up, that's fine. They're supposed to be adults or young adults at the very least. They're not supposed to be literal infants. And don't get me started on the poopsie ones. That's definitely some kind of fetish stuff. But I just, I really would like to see a step back from that. There's always been, there have always been like baby dolls that have wet themselves. There have always been like, you know, you feed the baby and it poops. That's always been a thing. But the dolls that that usually applies to aren't wearing falsies and shiny lipstick. I don't know. I don't know, man. That just makes me super uncomfortable. And finally, number five. Lines that don't get a chance to live. And this has been, this has been ongoing. But Mattel, I'm going to call you guys out right now because you're the biggest culprits in my eyes. Monster High was and is one of the most popular playline toy lines of the 21st century. They sold extremely well. For reasons, uh, this is a whole nother video. The line was rebooted in the mid 20 teens. And after maybe, maybe a year, maybe two, canceled abruptly. No, no chance at recovery. It's just, we're done. Ever After High got boned by Disney descendants. They're gone. Wild Hearts Crew got one initial release wave and some fashion packs. And as far as I can tell, they're gone. Uh, sources have led me to believe that this isn't Mattel, but Moose. Gonna call you out for the shoppies. Gonna call you out for Capsule Chicks. Both of those. Where'd they go? These lines have been around for like, I don't know, maybe a year and they're not given any chance to survive. They're either being pinned as store exclusives, online exclusives. So if your parents only go to Target, you're never gonna have seen a Wild Hearts Crew doll. And that's one of the most interesting and diverse doll lines we've gotten in the better part of a decade. And it's gone now. You know, the capsule checks. You know, we get five, varieties and as far as i've been able to tell that's it no more is is it really that you've got like the big three you've got barbie you've got lol and you've got disney princess and that's it there's no room in the market for anything else even taking disney things there's even marvel lines and star wars doll lines that have been canceled before they've had a chance to thrive what is going on? Is the almighty dollar really speaking that hard? You know, are people really only doing that? Or do you just want to focus on what you know already exists and not take any risks? L I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. And it's really annoying because there are so many incredible small lines out there that deserve the love, that deserve the, the collection power that Monster High had, that Barbie has, that heck, even like American Girl has. And yes, I am very aware that I have just named three Mattel lines. But, you know, they're, give them a chance, y'all. Give them a chance to live. Now, Mattel is supposedly coming out with the Cave Club line some point this year. And I really want this one to live. 
It seems so cool. They're putting money into it. They're doing webisodes. They're doing stop motion webisodes. It's cool. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but I don't have my hopes up. I don't know, y'all. I, I just, it's been itching at me to make a video like this and I hope I got my points across. I know some of the things I'm saying are probably a little controversial. Um, I welcome healthy discussion in the comments. If things get too weird, I'm closing them down. But just that's, it's been on my mind as an adult collector, an adult toy line collector who just keeps seeing this stuff go down and I can't abide it. I can't, the dude does not abide. But yeah, um, I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any other like pet peeves, uh, I did have a lot of people mention uh, like unchangeable clothes, like plastic clothes, dolls with like dolls and figures with like low articulation points. Um, it's stuff that we've seen can be done and can be done very reasonably. So I don't know what's going on y'all. But anyway, I think that's going to be it. My social media links are in the description below. If you'd like to see more from me, more from this channel, hit that little subscribe button. Click the little bell, because if you want to stay in the know, the bell's the way to go. Likes and comments, let me know to keep doing what I'm doing, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.